to the record letters from the D.C. Police Union and the National Fraternal Order of Police expressing support for H.J. Res 26. Hearing no objection, I now recognize Dr. Burgess for any questions he may have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and thank you both for being here today and, and for your thoughtful testimony. Mr. Comer, let me just ask you, absent these two joint resolutions that you're proposing today, when would these when would these two statutes go into effect? So there's some urgency to us doing this. Well, I thank you for, I mean, it just, some of this stuff sometimes just defies gravity, letting non-citizens vote. I mean, I, I, there'd be no way to explain that back home right. and to allow that to occur in the nation's capital. And you're right about the crime part. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we and every visitor who comes to the nation's capital, we have that responsibility as well. Right. If, if I may, uh, Mr. Burgess, the, the Biden administration just uh, issued a statement of administration policy uh, that both House Resolution 24 and 26 uh, does not include a veto threat. So it just states that Congress should let D.C. be a state. That's the position from the White House. So they're not threatening to veto this. Uh, that's quite a pivot from where they were uh, a week ago. So... I think the, the public support is clearly uh, on our side on these two resolutions, and there is a sense of urgency, as you mentioned. Well, thank you very much for your testimony. I'll yield back, Mr. Chairman. Ranking members uh, recognize for any questions he cares well, to ask. Well, thank you, Mr. 